Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. Today we're at the greatest muscle car show on the planet, the Muscle Car and Corvette National. And you're gonna see something unique. Well, tell us, Lou, what's unique? You show quite a few unique cars. First of all, I got Julie and Chris Hammond with me today. And uh, Julie, what year make and model is this one? 1970 Superbird. 1970 Superbird. Chris, how many miles on this car? Right now it shows 9,046. <laughs> 9,000. 46 miles on our Superbird, and those are original miles. Correct. Unbelievable. So, Julie, you are a uh, confessioned uh, car girl, so you weren't a car girl. How did you become a car girl? Well, once we started dating and we got married, I knew that, if we were, that he had a love for cars and that I needed to learn more about it since it was going to be a part of our life. And you got the appreciation of the cars. Absolutely. And you're a teacher. Yes. So I'm curious to see, I'm hoping all of your students will make a comment on the video and tell us what they think about, and we'll go right to, well, your car. Chris, I'm going to take you if you don't mind. Sure. Let's go right to our Superbird. My first reaction is, whenever you see a tail like that, if that was in front of you, wow. Thanks. And how long have you had this car now? We've had this car almost five years. Where did you find this? You said it kind of found you. Well, um, we got an email from a friend that had a Mustang Boss 429 for sale. Oh, wow. And he's like, we should buy that, meaning my brother and I. Great and, plate, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and we are like, went and looked at it, and it was at a dealership. And the price was just ridiculous. You know, Boss 429s do carry a premium. But I was on the site. And I found this car, you know, 70 Plymouth Superbird. And ever since I was a little kid, I've always loved the Wing Warriors. I mean, why wouldn't you? The big wing in the back, the aerodynamic nose. And I saw this car and I got reading the description, and it said it was an unrestored, but a little over 9,000 miles. And I looked at the price, it was like half the price of that Boss 429. So I sent an email back to the guy that sent it to me and said, Yeah, the Boss is nice, you can't afford it. The Superbird, however, is every bit as cool, and it's a survivor. And these are the original wheels? Yes, those original wheels, those are the original polyglass tires. So these are the tires that were born on the car when it was brand new. Back in, this car was built in November of 1969. That's so anyway, unbelievable. Go ahead. I sent this message, my brother was on it, and like two minutes after I sent it, saying, you know, I'd much rather have a Superbird, my brother's like, what's wrong with this car? If it is what it says it is, it's you, you, we need to get this. And I'm like, yeah, I don't understand it because why not? Plus it's a car we've always wanted and boy, so it kind of just fell in our lap. So he sent an email, the next day we got a call and before you knew it, we're sending a lot of money to a person we don't know uh, to buy the car. And when you got it, it was everything you expected. Oh yes, indeed, everything and more. What's interesting about the car is what it lacks, which makes it really, really special. Just look at the bumper at. Yep. Go ahead, I'm listening. So anyway, what's unique about the Superbirds, you know, they were converted roadrunners, and they used Dodge Coronet fenders. And if you look at the front fender, the Coronet being, you know, a fancier car, the side marker light is chrome. But the Roadrunner, built on the Belvedere, is not quite as a fancy car, and their side marker light is body color. So if you look at the... So the back one's body color. Correct. And let's go back to the front. And it's got a chrome bezel on it. And it's chrome. And also you've got chrome up here. Yep, and that's part of the whole aerodynamic uh, things that the Chrysler engineers were doing to make the cars faster on the high bank bulbs. And of course your back window is smooth as well. It's right. interesting, all Superbirds had vinyl tops. Exactly. Uh, let's uh, open the trunk, shall we? The Superbirds wing is set a little bit in the middle. It's not all the way to the back, and you can see that, uh, does it go higher? Does That's it. Open it. Higher? That's it. That's cool. And we've got some trunk and treat, so let's describe these. First of all, that is an original spare tire. Yep. That's the original spare tire for the car. Uh, what's also interesting about the Superbirds is you had two jacks. You had a bumper jack, which is in the middle of the spare tire for the rear of the car, and then you had a scissor jack to get underneath the uh, front end of the car to lift it. So you, you have both jacks. You also have this brace that holds that wing Correct. together. 
Yep, so that brace, there was so much downforce that these wings generated without that brace, it would actually start to deform the quarter panels on a car at speed. Got it. So these are all pieces that came with the car. Correct. I'm gonna let you open, or this is just a one piece piece. Yeah, that's a one piece. Okay. So then, uh, uh, the original owner's manual. Tell me about this, this is interesting. Yeah, the keys are, are pretty interesting, and this is the original uh, tag that came from the dealership when the car was new with its keys, and then it also has the tag, so if you're ever to lose the keys, you could take that number and they'd punch out the right key for your car. So the back is there. There you go. Amazing. Let me show these build sheets. Yep. And this is, you know, when the car was going down the assembly line, they'd have build sheets to let you know what options the car is so they know how to build the car. And they, we actually have three of these broadcast sheets that uh, were found for the car. You found these in the back seat? It came with the car when we bought it. They had somebody, one of them is like taped to the glove box, one of them is underneath the seat, um, another one underneath the carpet. I'm being super careful. No problem. And you can kind of see the rust stains from the springs for that. This one came from underneath the seat. That's amazing. And then this piece here as well. So Chrysler was also into the, the marine industry, so within the owner's manual you also got this nice little flyer about boats and outboard motors. So marketing. Chrysler Marine Power. Yes, they're making it happen, Captain. Got it. Well, let's take a look. Those, let's grab those keys. Yep. Let's take a look at the interior. We'll let you close that. Where's the DIN sticker? Door. It's the all original interior. We. Nothing's been done. It's the original vinyl top. It's spectacular. Our beep beep. Naturally, you gotta you gotta do that when you're with a super bird. Hear that sound. It was really nice. The clock still works as of the tachometer. Even the AM radio works. Wow. One of the nice things about this car, it's, it's been well cared for because it, the uh, colors on the gauges will start to yellow in time, but these are just as crisp and bright and white as the day it was new. So, do you know the backstory to this car, like how it stayed so pristine? Yep. Um, a gentleman in Canandaigua, New York, bought the car off the showroom floor back in 1970. He drove it sparingly for four years and then he parked it in his garage. And it sat parked for basically 30 years. Then in uh, 2005, he sold to the car to a gentleman in Tennessee. Okay. The guy from Tennessee owned it for three years and then it made its way to uh, Barrett Jackson in Palm Springs of 2008. A Canadian enthusiast bought the car at that time and then went to Canada. So from 2008 until 2017 when my brother and I bought the car, it was in Canada. Unbelievable. Let's take a look under the hood. Sure thing. Another uh, thing the about this. The headlights still open? Oh yeah. Okay. We'll open those when we, when we, we'll open this. So another thing about the Superbird. A lot of cars, you know, they put the uh, hood pins on, you know, make you, you got a fast car, you got the hood pins with the lanyards. These actually retain the hood on the Superbird. It does have a safety catch in the middle, but there is no other latch that holds it down. So the safety pins, the hood latches actually keep the hood closed. And if they're, you know, they're functional hood pins. Exactly. Another thing to note is that 
you know, when you have a survivor type car, you got to keep it as original as possible. There are going to be maintenance items that occur, but a lot of times people go in, you know, and detail the engine. But if you look closely on the engine valve covers, it still has the factory crayon marks that identify the engine. So when you look at the build sheet, that number, as well as the transmission, those crayon marks correspond to this car with that build sheet, and that's how they are. So these marks are all... Yep. Go ahead, show me the... Oh, there we go. I got yes. the crayon marks. That's amazing. 440 Commando with the racing flags. Anything else I need to know under this hood? Obviously, we've got the BP Horn, which is the Roadrunner, the water. Any other markings? Like I'm seeing this mark back here. Yep. You wouldn't normally see that. And I don't know if you can look down between under the cross member. There should be markings on that cross member as well. Maybe too dark in there for you to see it. Yeah, do you have a cell phone? Maybe we could grab a light real quick. No, unfortunately, my cell phone's a flip phone, so. But you can tell that. Uh, your flashlight? Did you, can, can I hear your flashlight on your phone? Hey! Have you got your little light with you? Sorry? You got your little light with you? Yes, I do. Can I use your flashlight there? So the engine assembly number is going to be on the front of that valve cover. This one. See that? See it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I do. That's the engine assembly number that'll be on the build sheet. And then show me down here what we're doing. If you doing. look down. There we go. Oh yeah. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Well, let's fire it up, shall we? Sure. Thank you. Close the hood for a second. Headlights pop open. Nice. That was super good. All right, we'll shut that down. Come on out. Thank you. Julie, come on alongside us here. How did you get together? Your first time with the Muscle Car and Corvette National. It is. Yes. We're very excited to see you're all gonna, the different cars. Yeah, you're going to have a great time. I know, Julie, you mentioned that uh, you love learning about the cars and your students are going to be learning about the cars. I hope they really enjoy the channel because they'll hear the stories from the caretakers themselves just like we heard your story. What a fun time hanging out with you guys. What an amazing car. Thanks for being on My Car Story. Thank you very Thank much. You.